This is the horror story of me dealing with those dim, dim Chinese battery manufacturers who don't respond. I will be pointing fingers and naming names, so strap in. Building a battery pack? Cool. Me too. So those terminals covered in orange tape? That's where my pack is going to connect to the outside world via 6 gauge wire, which is standard for most 48 volt DC golf carts. But when I went to attach the lugs to the terminal, one of the terminals popped off. So what's a guy to do with the broken terminal? Well. As a stopgap, I super glued it back on. But come on, do you really think that's acceptable as a long-term solution? Of course not. So when I reached out to Calb to complain about their inferior product, I insisted that they make good on their two-year warranty. Oh my gosh, the engineers at Calb, they're just like insurance adjusters here in the US. They only know how to deny your claim. Even if there's no good reason to deny the claim, that's the default answer. Here we can see the engineer's response. Uh, let me quote this part. We checked the surface status of the failed sales. How, dude? By just looking at the picture I sent you? Okay, let's carry on. And made a comparison. Compared to what, dude? Your butt crack? He continues. From the comparison, we concluded that the failure is not a quality problem because the welding lines are clear and full. Oh, come on, man. So he concludes, sorry, we cannot replace it for you. Motherfucker. So of course I wrote him back and said, look again. And after looking at the new pictures shown here, the guy basically responds, no, 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 we've got it. Here we can see his response. Hi, Austin EV engineers. <laughs> I'm flattered that he thinks that at Austin EV only we have a whole team of engineers here, but buddy, it's just me, owner and has been electrical engineer. Okay, so anyways, he continues, this weld is finished by a laser of high energy. The top terminal will be will then form an alloy metal with the metal below. It's reliable and strong enough to withstand the force of 12 newton meters. Let me see here, 12 newton meters? That's about 106 inch pounds of force. Yeah, dude, there's no way I applied more than 106 inch pounds of force on that. He sends me back my own picture highlighting how it did not fail. Okay, Stone, now I'm pissed. I can see that arguing with someone halfway around the world is not going to get me anywhere, so I decide just to hire a college-age welder journeyman to TIG weld this terminal back on. Well, that was a big mistake, because the battery never charged after that. So into the trash it goes, and I humbly hold my tail between my legs and order a new battery from Cal. So at this point, I reassemble the pack, balance out the cells, and put this EV conversion back into rotation. All seems to be going well, until a couple months later I get a call from Literati that the Bookmoto EV won't charge. Oh god, for f sake, what now? Well this time it's the stock lead acid battery that's causing the problems. Or rather my setup of this battery that's causing the problems. You see this is the stock battery that came with this Bookmoto from Italy that is original to this Piaggio Op A50. So this battery's gotta be at least 30 years old and it doesn't hold a charge for shit. Because of this, the 12 volt battery is constantly drawing down the 48 volt traction battery. And well, after a month of letting the Bookmoto EV conversion just sit idle, the 12 volt battery completely drained down the 48 volt pack. You see, the way this Thunderstruck charger is designed one has to unplug and then re-plug in the charger to start a new charging cycle. The charger won't just kick on because the voltage falls will slow some threshold. At this point, I get Big Moto back to my shop, I open the pack up again. Oddly enough, I find that the voltage on two cells is completely drained down to zero volts. I mean, the BMS doesn't even register those cells. It counts them as missing. I pull those two cells out and I can't seem to get them to hold a charge. Like, they won't even charge up to 3.4 volts, 
And as soon as I take the charger off, the voltage quickly falls on their own, just sitting there idle, not connected to anything. And it's after attempting to charge these cells that I notice that now they're terribly bloated. I mean, bad. So I write to my friends at Calb again about their well-advertised but rarely honored two-year warranty. And of course, that motherfucker Stone had this to say. He says, for vehicles, almost all data need to be monitored, recorded. Hold up, Stone, what? I mean, monitored, yes, but recorded? I mean, I don't even know of a BMS in existence today that records voltage for historical analysis. Man, this guy's tripping. Well, anyways, he continues, like voltage, current, temperature, insulating resistance, wait, what the fuck is that? And state of charge. Homie, I'm certain that a BMS does not only not record voltage, but it doesn't record all those other variables. I, I don't know what you're looking for. So moving on to the next paragraph, I will agree with him on this next point, which is to have the BMS command like a relay or a contactor to disconnect this pack from the system should any single cell voltage fall below 2.5 volts. I did not set my BMS up to do that. Um, I only set my BMS up to sound an alarm slash buzzer if any single voltage falls below 2.5 volts. And I guess that's where I went wrong because this literati sat unattended for almost a month with no one around to hear the alarm because of COVID. And so when someone finally went to the garage and heard it and alerted me at this point, it was, you know, well past the safe range. So because I failed to set up my system with this level of protection of disconnecting itself, if the voltage falls below some threshold, I had to really own up to this mistake. And again, buy new cells from Calb out of my own pocket. I did not charge a customer for this one. So in the end, I got a three additional cells and replaced those cells that seemed to be the worst off. That is, looked the most bloated or wouldn't charge up all the way. It took me weeks to get this pack fully balanced using a top charge balancing and then reassemble the pack and return the pack to Bookmoto and to Literati. If you'd like to see a video of me reprogramming the Bookmoto after repairing the battery, click here now to take you to that video. We hope you got something out of this, and if so, would you please hit that like button, or better still, hit that subscribe button. That's how we make more videos. Until next time, this is Austin EV Only.